vector functions limit and continuity let's say we have a function f of x equals to x square the domain of this parabola is x can be any value so from negative infinity to positive infinity and then for the range y is always greater than or equal to zero the vertex of the parabola is at zero zero and then as x either increase or decrease y goes all the way up to positive infinity so the minimum y value is zero and then it can y value is always zeros or above so what that means is x square so this function x square assigns each element in the domain to an element in the range so let's say we pick an element in the domain x equals to 3 and then the assignment is you square the 3 you get a 9 so 3 is in domain is a 3 is assigned to 9 9 is in range so one picture you see a lot back to of introduce back to uh the time when people in when when you read functions on on your textbook is they have two ellipse one for domain one for range 3 is in domain and then 9 is in range the connection between 3 and 9 is x square so x square is a bridge that connects the domain and the range how about in a three-dimensional vector so now we are talking about three-dimensional vector i'm just going to say like vector so vector has three components each component is a function so let's say we have vector function r of t that is equals to f of t g of t h of t which is equals to f of t times i g of t times i and then h of t times k i j and k and then t is the independent variable so how about the limit as we when we take the limit of this vector function and then we let t approaches to a that means for every element for every component f g and h we will just take the limit so t approaches to a for the function f function g and then function h that sounds very complicated but when you ask do the exercise the exercise is pretty easy so for in this video i will do two types of problem the first type is find the domain of the vector function and then the second type is find the limit of the vector function okay starting with the domain so for the domain i'm going to match the color first so let's match the color i have a vector function so this is a vector function r of t equals to cosine of t times i ln t j plus 1 divided by t minus 2k so there are three functions f g and h so function f function g and function h so what is the domain of cosine so for cosine x can be anything you want so domain for cosine that is negative infinity to positive infinity and then for ln ln we have to let t greater than or equal to is zero is this right can t be zero no ln of zero is undefined for the ln function when x is equals to zero there is a vertical asymptote so this is incorrect it should be t greater than zero only and then for the rational function we need to know that t cannot be equal to two all right and then you summarize all of them put all the restriction on the same line so it has to be greater than zero and then no two so greater than zero and then we skip two and then we keep on going and then for the vector function what is the domain so the domain is from zero to two and then from two to positive infinity that's it right that sounds complicated but the work is really easy so moving on to the next vector function we have the next vector function right over here i'm going to move this up to save myself a little bit of space so we have a vector function three components we have an ln function rational function and a exponential function all right so ln rational function exponential functions the last one should be a h of t right okay so i'm going to match the color first and then i'm going to move this a little bit to the right and then i'm going to add h of t equals to that okay so what is the domain for an ln you have to specify that the, everything inside the parentheses must be greater than zero as a result t must be greater than negative one 
and then uh, for this the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity no restrictions at all and then for the one in the middle you have a square root in the denominator so you have to specify that the radicand 9 minus t squared must be greater than only no zero because when you equal to zero we have a trouble for the t in the numerator no restrictions for that and then this inequality may take some work to may take a many lines of work to solve so the way we solve this uh, non-linear inequality is we treat that we treat the greater than as equal and then we factor that minus t and then 3 plus t and then we set that equals to 0 and then we solve for that we have t equals to 3 and t equals to negative 3 and then we look for our test intervals so we have a negative 3 we have a positive 3 so this is from positive 3 to infinity and then between 3 and past negative 3 and positive 3 and then this one is from negative infinity to negative 3 and this our test interval and then we have to test every single one of them let's just do it on the next page because uh, that we have to set up a table so that is a 3 minus t and then a 3 plus t and then we multiply them right because that is what the inequality is 3 minus t and then 3 plus t so this we draw a table like that and then we have three intervals the first one is at a negative 3 and then the second one the cut is at 3 so this is uh, from negative infinity to negative 3 and then between negative 3 and 3 and then from 3 to positive infinity and then within each interval we pick a test value something inside the interval negative 4 pick something easy t equals to 0 and t equals to 4 and then you plug it in so 3 minus negative 4 all I need to know is that is greater than 0 3 minus 4 less than 0 so when you have a greater than 0 times less than 0 positive times negative you get a negative at the end and then this is a 3 minus 0 3 plus 0 they are all greater than 0 so when you multiply two positive you have positive by the way why do you multiply them because this is a multiplication and then finally this is a 3 minus 4 negative and then this is a 3 plus 4 positive negative times positive is negative so what we are looking for is we are looking for 9 minus t squared greater than 0 and then we are picking this interval all right so that is the interval that we pick and then we also consider this we also consider the t greater than negative 1 the negative infinity to positive infinity don't worry about that because the t greater than negative one will override the negative infinity to positive infinity so as a result this is what we do we want to be we have a from negative three to positive three but in the meantime we have a negative one right here although you want everything between them but the great uh, the x greater than the t greater than negative one will override the, the piece where uh, the piece between negative one and negative three so the piece that you are looking for is right here I cannot need I, I cannot take this anymore because t must be greater than negative one this area doesn't satisfy so that means at the end of the day what is the domain of this vector function so this vector function r of t has a domain from negative one all the way to past the three and then this is the end of this problem all right, so let's solve the next type of problem. The next type of problem is finding the limit. So I am going to go back up and then right here, find the limit in blue. So find the limit. I have a, I have a vector function, i, j, and k. So what that means is here, I have a i, j, and k. So limit as t approaches to one. So that means you calculate the limit for every one of this component. So which is limit as t approaches to 1, we have t squared minus t divided by t minus 1. So now we are back to calculus 1. Uh, for the numerator, you just factor out a t, 
I know it has been a while, right? So factor out the t. This is a t minus one divided by t minus one, and then uh, you can do a cancellation. So we can do a cancellation, and then plug in t equals to one. So this is equals to one, and then this is the first answer. And then limit. As t approaches to one, the function in the middle you have t plus a. And then this one just plug in 1 plus a is 9 the square root of 9 is equals to 3 and then last one and t approaches to 1 we have sine of pi t divided by ln t so this one you will have to apply L'Hopital's rule because once you plug in so you have sine of pi divided by ln 1 this is a 0 over 0 so that means you can apply L'Hopital's rule L'Hopital's rule, you draw an edge, and then you take the numerator, you take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of sine is cosine of pi t, and then by chain rule, wow, that has that is a while that was a while ago, right? You studied that a while ago. So by chain rule, when you take the derivative of pi t, you get a pi. And then the derivative of ln t, 1 over t. So this one, when you plug in t equals to 1, uh, cosine of Cosine of pi is equals to negative 1. So you have negative 1 times pi, then you have a negative pi. This is the third answer. So at the end of the day, what is the limit equal to? So the limit is equals to 1 times i. Here. 1 times i and then plus 3 times j minus pi times k. That's it. Okay, moving on to the last problem. So the last problem, we have the last problem right over here. I believe that I can move this a little bit up to save myself some, some space. So we are taking the limit of each of that. And then the first one limit, uh, this one gets you an infinity over infinity, right? So you can apply L'Hopital's rule. I think there is an S, H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L. L'Hopital's rule, so we draw an H. The derivative of the numerator is 1. The derivative of the denominator is e to the t. Can we just plug in? Yup. So this is 1 divided by infinity, which is equals to 0. That's the first answer that we need. And then uh, that one, still remember that limits at infinity. So this one depends on the biggest degree in the denominator. So since the biggest degree in the denominator is equals to 3, so what we are going to do is we are going to divide each term by t raised to the third power. So we are going to divide each term by t raised to the third power. So what is that equal to? That is equals to, uh, that is equals to limit as t approaches to infinity this is a 1 plus 1 over t square and then 2 divided by t no, 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 not 2 divided by t just a 2 just a 2 minus 1 divided by t to the third so once x approaches to infinity all the little fractions become a zero then you have a one half so this is our third answer and oh this is our second answer and then the last one the last one is a sign right so the last one is a sign oh it looks like i forgot to erase that the answer i wrote last time so when t approaches to infinity you have t times sine 1 over t so this one i will force to put the t in the denominator like that so we have a sine 1 over t that is in the numerator no change but the t in front of that i force to change that to 1 over t as a result that gives me a 0 over 0 so whenever you have a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity you apply L'Hopital's rule. So you apply L'Hopital's rule by taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So this one is t to the negative 1. So you have negative 1 over t squared. And then the sine, the derivative of sine is cosine 1 over t. And then the derivative of 1 over t is negative 1 over t squared. And then as a result, these two terms got cancelled. Once you plug in infinity, you have a cosine. 1 over infinity, 
which is a cosine of zero, which is equals to one. So we have a one, one half and a zero in a box. And then finally, so what is the limit? So the limit is you have a vector, three components for function, uh, three, three functions, right? So for the function f, g and f, g and h. So for function f, you have a zero. For function h, you have a half. For function f, g, h. So this is function f, function g and then function h, you have a one. So that is the limit. All right, that is the end of this video. If you like the way I explain vector functions, limit and continuity, give this video a like. If this is something that would like to see in the future, subscribe to my channel. Trust me, it is worthwhile coming back to visit for more math contests. As always, I will meet you all in another video. Signing out and take care.